Hey everyone, welcome, happy Tuesday. I just wanna make sure that we give everyone um, just a couple of minutes to, to sign on. Um, and we're waiting for our co-host today, Brianna Carney with Crew Bloom. Um, so just wanna give her a minute or two and I wanna give everybody else uh, just a second or two to uh, sign on, click your notifications in your LinkedIn if you've signed up and, uh, and we'll be with you shortly. Hey, just a quick check in. Can everyone hear us? If you can hear, if you can hear me at the moment, um, can you just type in the chat that you can hear me? Hey everyone, I just quickly check in. Can you guys hear us? If you can hear us, can you just type in the chat that you're able to hear us so we know? And I think it's usually okay. So yeah, I just wanna get started. So uh, welcome everyone, happy Tuesday. Uh, thanks for taking out the time on this Tuesday to uh, spend with us. Um, this is our LinkedIn series, When Great Minds Collaborate. Um, you know, if you don't already know me, I am the founder and CEO of a company called Cornerstone Paradigm Consulting. You probably signed up for this event uh, on, our, on our business page. Thanks so much for that. Um, but what we do is we're an industry agnostic business operations consulting firm. Um, we go into all kinds of companies and we help them go beyond the symptoms and we really help them fix what's not working. Um, we cover the end-to-end -end operational life cycle. That means the people, the processes, the technology, and the customer experience. Um, you can certainly head to our website, cpcchangeagent.com uh, for more information. But today is going to be all about onshore, offshore, not sure. Um, guys, I'm really excited for today because this co-host of mine is not only a colleague, but a friend. Um, Brianna is the co-founder of a company called Crew Bloom. Um, we're really familiar with Crew Bloom and all like the epic work that they're doing, but I really want to give Brianna a chance to, uh, to kind of talk to you guys today a little bit about what does that mean, onshore, offshore? Or maybe you're just not sure. So welcome, Brianna. Thanks so much for being on. Appreciate Thanks, it. Amanda. It's always a pleasure. I'm super excited to um, chat a little bit more today. Yeah, awesome. So, um, you know, so for some of our viewers, they may or may not know you and they may or may not be familiar with Crew Bloom. Um, you know, and I think you guys are doing epic stuff. I mean, I think you're an epic leader anyway. We've written tons of blog, blog, uh, you know, blog posts together and articles. Um, that really kind of speak to the types of values that we both share. But I'd love for you to maybe talk to the audience about who Crew, Crew Bloom is, what are you guys doing over there, and maybe a little bit about yourself. Awesome, yep. So thanks again, Amanda. Um, Crew Bloom is just setting out to raise the bar in terms of um, outsourcing. So we've all called a bank, an airline, gotten connected with someone outside the U.S., and um, our experience was um, perhaps marginal at best. Um, Crew Bloom connects the top 2% of folks um, working outside the U.S., so today they're logging in from um, 14 countries with primarily sales and support roles, and we can look at um, give or take a 70% reduction in, in cost on these hires. Um, so um, empowering our, our model and our, our business with um, software and, and technology is, is critical and crucial. Um, and then just really um, providing a, a, a really seamless um, offshoring experience. I love that. I love that. And I love your team. And uh, clearly, I adore you. Um, Brianna is actually a real friend of mine. Uh, we don't just... Uh, you know, this whole series is really to introduce my friends and colleagues to to our audience, really, and then kind of how we partner together. So, 
I love your business model. I love the team. I'd love to also hear maybe if we can like elaborate a little bit on what differentiates maybe the Crew Bloom team other than their epic, but what differentiates the Crew Bloom team from maybe like another outsourcing service? Yeah, great question. So I think um, when we look at kind of our competitive landscape, there's um, the convergences and concentrics of the world, massive players, over 100,000 agents globally taking on accounts like Delta Airlines and Citibank. Yeah. Then we look at like project-based platforms, Fivers and Upworks that are attrition dependent. Um, and then there's um, some players that do something similar to Crew Bloom. I think um, our, our core differentiators are our caliber of talent. So in our sourcing process, we're not only focused on, on the hard skills and the experience and the tool familiarity, but we're also really targeting um, folks that are um, culturally aligned. So we're drilling into soft skills, really ensuring that not only are they going to perform and drive revenue, but that you're going to just love working alongside um, your Crew Bloomers every day. I love that. I love that. And so I'd love to hear... Um, like, so I know some of the companies that we can collaborate on, but I'd love I'd love for you to just kind of expand a little bit more for for the viewers. What kinds of companies can you basically help staff, and what does that look like? Yeah, great question. So, our um, um, ideal um, company profile is um, over five million in annual revenue. Um, they're they're typically um, give or take fifty. Um, we, we, we don't work with client partners in um, the Fortune 500 um, scope. Um, the, the clients that we work with have is established processes and systems in place. As you know, it's, imp <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> um, to think of um, Crew Bloom as just a set it and forget it solution, right? So you have to be operationally sound. You have to have given thought to the process and, and the training and the systems required. Um, to kind of plug in that human capital to scale. So if we have two highly technical founders trying to launch an app, they, they haven't um, established sales leadership, they don't have the um, investment of, of tools in place, will fall short. But if you've um, given thought to the processes, executed them successfully in the past and are just in need of the human capital to plug in and scale, we're, we're a great fit. The majority of our, our um, client partners are in the SaaS space. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, certainly that's why we're, not only colleagues, but also friends is because we share um, the same sort of belief system of setting people up to be successful. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times that I've walked into situations where the team is crushing it with very little resources. And so this is yet another great example working with your team because they are remote, right? They're not, are they here in the US or are they located elsewhere? Yeah, great question. So we adopted a remote work model um, at, at inception. And the reason is, is because we wanted to just treat people better. We wanted to be able to pay livable wages because top performers want to not only pay their bills, that sucks no matter where we live, they want to send their kids to college and go on a vacation. And so really ensuring that we had a, um, a healthier margin um, was um, critical for us. Um, so the remote work model, I would say, is um, critical and, and crucial. Yeah, I mean, and 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 like I was I was beginning to say, it's it's that I couldn't also stress enough like setting people up for success mm -hmm. um, is really like a part of the formula of success. Like you have to give people the right resources, have the right processes, and this is not a shameless plug, although it could be, I guess. Um, <laughs> but um, but you know, like I can't tell you how many how many instances. Um, you know, companies want to maybe blame the people that work there as opposed to just kind of looking at the way that they do business. And in this, in your particular model, it couldn't be more important for companies to have the right systems in place, to have the right processing processes in place, because you are employing people all over the world, which is fantastic. And this pandemic has really kind of shed the positive light on we really don't need to be in the office all the time, that we really can you know, move business forward in some instances, not all businesses, but we really can move forward in that remote environment if we're set up properly. So I think that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah and I guess just to kind of piggyback on that and you know um, so well, there's it like so often people um, will go out on Fiverr and Upwork and just um, find someone and think that that's um, going to kind of, um, I guess it, there, it's going to work, right? But the reality is, is like as a business, 
uh, and, and in the for-profit arena, oxy the oxygen for us is revenue. And it, you have to invest um, in order to um, see a return. And so ensuring, um, like a, a, in a, a bringing on and investing in a, a partner such as um, you and your firm, but um, it's it's really crucial and critical. I think so many companies don't make it to profitability, in particular in the software space, um, just because they um, haven't really um, thought through um, the, the journey of an um, individual on their team. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think in some instances, especially if you're in like the lower end of the market, the $5 million market, you have to be so careful about how you spend your budget, your time, your energy and your effort. And if you're not set up for success, frankly, you're you're going to find the journey upward really frustrating and exhausting, frankly. Um, OK, so so that's great. So and, and I'd love like for you to maybe get a little bit deeper into what kinds of what kinds of roles mm -hmm. um you know if, if a company were to come if they're thinking about outsourcing mm -hmm. have some kind of a SaaS product right um and they say hey you know i wonder if crew bloom can help us solve x so like i guess what's the common what is the most more common i shouldn't say the most the more common um, sort of ask that a client may come to you and say, hey, can, can Crewbloom help us solve X? What is that X? Yeah, so um, so a lot of times we'll work with um, a, f a founder, um, members of the leadership team that are executing the sales process and that's exhausting and unsustainable. That's um, not, that's a, 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 I guess a shortcut or a hack that's not gonna empower scale. Yeah. Um, so for us to really um, get to the the nitty gritty and to really understand, like when when we talk to our client partners again, I'm really fortunate to to not be on um, the majority of discovery calls today. But the primary pain point is just like, look, it's so expensive to find resources on shore. It's just so expensive, and like I we don't want to overlook that the primary value proposition of our space is um, revenue um, saving. And so when we look at the SDR or BDR function, the cost of a um, qualified software um, BDR in, in the tri-state area is um, six figures with all, all in. Yeah. And so um, that's the, the primary pain point that we're solving. So I guess how many people would typically in, be involved in an engagement? Like how many, how many folks do you have to offer? You say, hey, you know what, we can give you x amount of people to do what is it to do like a call center function is it to do administrative um tasks you know kind of what sort of skills uh, might they have that might be able to help a company yeah so when we look at our, our revenue um 70 is generated from the outbound um environment outbound sales calls um account management, re-engagement, um, looking at the existing customer base and profile and, and really um, drilling into to their um, success and satisfaction and driving more revenue from them. Um, about 20% is generated from the inbound or support um, environment. So Aftershocks headphones, right? We navigate their technical support, right? Um, and then the other 10% is data, um, uh, um, an executive assistant, creative marketers, that sort of thing. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, and so when you said, I think the first thing that you said was outbound. So your team, you have folks on your team that can actually do outbound sales. Is Correct. that what you're saying? Okay. So they would like essentially what we would refer to as cold calling. They would do that. Exactly. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That is really interesting. And I think you know, um, certainly for specific kinds of businesses, you just you really never know, um, you know, like, you know, where you can find those kinds of resources and you're providing, um, you know, the talent to actually just already be, be able to do that. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, and so so I'd love to, like, maybe talk a little bit about maybe the training that your team kind of goes through. And I know that, you know, I obviously am familiar with them, but um, the level of training that they go through and the fact that, you know, you, you know, the person on the, the receiving end or the other end doesn't, won't necessarily know where they're located. So I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah. 
Yeah, great question. So the location agnosticity is um, really important. So keeping in mind that we work Eastern Standard Hours in Asia, um, there my team is logged in, it's 2.15 in the morning in, in Manila. Um, but the, the training element is critical. So again, just going back to what you, what, what um, Cornerstone does and, and the value that you guys bring, it's critical that an entire leadership team is um, equipped, they've trained teams before, they know what works and what doesn't work, um, they execute it. If, if, we, if we're gonna oversee and, and lead a, a team of crew bloomers and we've never ourselves been on the phone and executed those scripts and, and really dove in have, head first, we'll fall short. Um, the training is um, navigated in a tandem model. So we have a dedicated client success manager that's there from the inception of the partnership that's really deeply invested. But for us to say, for example, we're gonna just train them. It's a set it and forget it solution. Just partner with Crew Bloom and we're gonna just have it all sorted. Like that's sophomore. Um, we really rely on um, the folks that know the brain and the product and the value um, the best, which is undoubtedly the um, leadership team of our, our client partners. Yeah, I mean, and and it's also, and I, I would say like the set it and forget it rule, um, even, you know, even outside of like a call center team or what have you, that set it and forget it doesn't really exist. And we say that because it's always going to be a continuous improvement initiative, always. Uh, maybe not every day, you know, unless you're looking at something every single day, and maybe that's an instance or, or a circumstance for some businesses, but it's never going to be a set it and forget it. You always have to keep revisiting this and say, does it make sense? Does it still make sense to do it this way, to say things this way, to operate this way? What do we need to update? How has the business changed? Yeah, you know, I think business in general is such a, such a, such a versatile product, if you will, that you always need to be looking at, is this the right way to continue to do this? And not just get so comfortable and and not want to put in the effort um, to to really change anything or to make it better. So I mean, I we obviously clearly connect on a lot of oh, many different levels, obviously, <laughs> but that happens to be one of the bigger ones because set it and forget it is just frankly not real. Um, you right. know, you're not willing to put in the the time, energy, and effort. Um, you're going to keep finding yourself in a really frustrating state. Um, Amazing. So um, just a reminder for folks who are viewing live, uh, we can't actually see you. We can't see if you're, um, you know, you're on this uh, on this call with us. So just let us know if you have any questions, type them in the chat. We'll be getting to questions in about five or six minutes. Um, but no, Brianna, this was really, really helpful. And so, um, you know, I want to just kind of maybe close our, our chat with one sort of heavy topic. Um, you know, I know that we know quite a bit about Crew Bloom. I, uh, you know, I clearly love, love the team. We share a lot of values, especially in our style of leadership, yours and mine. Um, and we've done a couple of articles now on, on our styles of leadership and just the things that we value. And so, um, I'd love for you to kind of maybe, um, if you have any sort of parting advice, you know, for a company that's, you know, sometimes what I hear from, mm -hmm from clients and potential clients about offshoring is they aren't sure. They're really not even sure where to start. They're not sure if that's the right decision for their, for their company. Um, and for some, they're so adamant, but yet they're kind of like in the dark about how to go about it. So I'd love to hear just, you know, um, how you, you know, what you might share with them, any like sort of parting, Parting advice for people who are not sure. Frankly, they're not sure. They want to onshore because they're worried about the language, right? They're thinking about offshoring because of the cost. Uh, and, and some are really, they really aren't sure. So I'd love to love to just sort of uh, maybe, you know, wind it down with some advice for, for folks. Yeah, great. Great, um, <laughs> um, I guess, final um, topic to kind of dive into. So. Um, first and foremost, I'll just kind of go back through my entrepreneurial journey. Like I wish we would have met yeah, um, right. five, five years ago, right? Um, but that being said, I think it's really important to kind of surround yourself and support yourself with experts. Um, yes. folks, what, um, there's this um, temptation or syndrome where founders are um, put up against just kind of knowing everything, right? I'm a specialist in 
12 different roles in 12 different departments um, of the business. And I, it's not possible for me or I would be um, lying to myself if I would um, feel confident making all business decisions on my own. So I'm really fortunate to obviously have an incredible team, but also to have um, a lot of really smart um, folks on my on, on my side that are, I'm able to lean on and, and bounce ideas off of. Companies like yours, Amanda, like you know that um, there's a lot on the line when you own a business and it's um, really, really tough. And so I think just kind of um, working through and, and being really real with yourself um, as to um, what is kind of the, the, the drive what, and what is your goal as an entrepreneur? If your goal is not as an entrepreneur is to be a, um, a solopreneur and to, um, you know, n not drive um, revenue and scale, that's completely beautiful and, and, and amazing. More power to, to, to the entrepreneurial journey. However, if you, if you are looking to scale um, and drive revenue, I think that not considering um, offshore talent and, and, and human capital would be um, short sighted. So to go into those um, um, higher level um, road mapping um, calls and, and to really, um, I, I guess, um, weigh all options is, is critical. And then partnering with someone like Crew Bloom or an organization like yours. Um, for example, internally, we just partnered with um, Pilot to help us with um, some of the bookkeeping and, and accounting functions, um, which has been, has been awesome. And so I think just um, really leaning on folks and, and bouncing around ideas will um, be the place to start. Yeah. And so so let's say I'm a company, I'm at the five to $10 million marker and mm -hmm. I'm a founder, I'm a co-founder and we're saying we got to scale and we don't even know how to go about this, but we need, we do need the human capital, but we need folks who really, you know, they're trainable and, 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 you know, we know what we can afford. We've got a certain budget. How do they, how do they even go about this journey? Like how do they even go about starting it? What do they do? Yes, just in touch. Obviously I, I'm here as a, a resource in, in, um, to um, kind of help my team. Um, the, the things that I think are, are critical to have thought through is um, what is our, um, um, what, what KPIs and metrics are we gonna be looking at to evaluate performance in this role? What training processes and um, systems are in place? Um, things like CRM systems and VoIP solutions and um, integrations and automations. Those um, conversations are um, critical um, that, that need to um, be, um, I guess, sorted before we, we look to um, scale any team. And so that, that's where I would start to really like work through um, the processes. If you have a lead process in place, if you have a proven system and solely are in need of human capital, um, I strongly um, believe that, that going offshore is um, the only solution to, to robustly scale rapidly. Yeah, and I would say, and I would, I would just sort of piggyback back off of that and say, if you don't, call me. <laughs> um, you know, so because we do, and we're we're sort of really in the same mindset where we really want to help the end client, we want to help them be successful. I also believe in offshoring. Um, I, you know. We just hired some folks that are, you know, offshore um, and I'm excited about it. And we've had interns from all over the world and it's just been it's really, really been a fun journey. And um, I've certainly learned a lot, you know, even, you know, in the space that 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 I work in. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer. There's always things to learn and, and they teach me a lot. It's really fun. They're young. They're like millennials. So they, do, they know a ton of stuff. So it's it's been quite an interesting journey. Um, all right, so this was fantastic. I want to leave just a couple of minutes for folks if they have any questions for you um, to type it in the chat, guys. It's the chat in the stream, maybe not the chat um, that you're viewing on LinkedIn. I'm not really sure what this, what's really funny is, and we're going to have the team join uh, in, in a few weeks, these lives, because I'm actually not sure what it looks like on LinkedIn while we're, while we're streaming. So, um, but we'd love, we'd love for, to hear from you guys. If you have any questions for Priyana, um, she's fantastic. She's, she's, she'll answer your questions about offshoring. If you're not sure about offshoring, um, actually, Brianna, that's a great, that's a great way to, to, to also um, offer some, some additional information to the viewers. If they wanted to get in touch with you, or maybe if they wanted to learn more, how can they go about that? 
Of course. So um, crewbloom.com is our website. So C-R-E-W-B-L-O-O-M. Um, you can send me a direct email, Brianna at crewbloom.com. Um, add me on LinkedIn. Um, we're on, on social media. That's our handles as well. I'm always here um, as a resource. Um, obviously, not only for folks that are in the position to, to onboard a partner um, such as Crew Bloom, but if you're um, just starting out and um, have some questions, I'm always here um, in any way I can. Ooh, Brianna, we have a question for you. Uh, okay, so um, Monil asks, uh, what are your biggest business challenges, Brianna? Ooh, good question. <laughs> um, so when we look at our business, there's two sides that we need to focus on. Not only do we need to engage potential client partners that are um, hiring, we have a sales ops team that sources leads, um, goes on Indeed, Craigslist, um, finds um um, good fits and, and job descriptions. We then um, reach out to them. Um, but the, the more critical part of our business is the human capital and the talent side. So um, for us, there's, um, a, a, I mean, a cultural integrity um, um, metric of, of applicant response time that's really, really important to us. So our most valuable asset on planet Earth is our time. So thanks everyone for tuning in today, but it's really important that anyone that in, in um, applies at Crew Loom is, is given feedback in a timely manner. And um, so we're building actually a, um, an automation tool for applicant screening and scoring um, today. Um, so the language element, I was just on um, some calls with our um, dev team and um, just having a, a little bit of a, an issue with the API and sync there. But I would say undoubtedly our biggest pain point today is um, scoring and um, getting the applicants through the, through the, the, um, the, the system in a, in a timely manner. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, and, and we're also sim going not through a similar process, but we're also working with some new developers to, to try to figure out some of our tech stuff on the internal side of things. And it is an adventure. Um, uh, any other questions? I know we got a couple of minutes. Uh, I want to keep Brianna. I want to be respectful of Brianna's time and your time. Um, so if you have any additional questions, type it in the chat. We're here. Just want to give them. Thanks so much, Brianna. I appreciate oh, spending yeah. time with us. I owe you dinner, by the way. I didn't forget. I um, don't think so. We'll we'll discuss that at our next. Time. And I mean, I'll, we'll and we'll go downtown. And make it a make it an adventure. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So it looks like we don't have any additional questions. But um, for for those of you viewing today, uh, if you have any additional questions for Brianna, connect with her on LinkedIn. It's Brianna Carney. She's the co-founder of. Blue, uh, Oh my gosh, Crew Bloom. I don't know why I'm like tongue tied today. Uh, the co founder of Crew Bloom, or you guys can head to her website, um, crewbloom.com, and you can find out additional information. Her team is fantastic. Um, and really, and I think uh, booking a call with Brianna, you'll, you'll be really pleasantly surprised at some of the things that they can offer and how fantastic they are. Um, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed today's talk. I did. I, I adore Brianna. She's a great partner of ours. Um, and uh, we want to thank everyone for their time. We hope you guys join us next Tuesday, as, as always, every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Uh, on LinkedIn. And uh, we hope that you su subscribe to our page, follow our page, and we'll speak soon. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Thanks, Brianna. Bye-bye.